me and my dad found out that we're trying to figure out was alpaca fertilizer good as a natural fertilizer compared to other natural fertilizers. We we're trying to see like which alpaca manure is the best. The best one that came out was the composted alpaca manure, which was the same, same even a bit more if you see over here, as the synthetic, which was the man-made fertilizer, which is very good because this shows that you can use natural instead of using man-made. And also, it had the lower shoot to root ratio, which basically means that it had a lot of time focusing on its roots, like growing its roots, so it had more water and nutrients put into it. Am I right in saying that one of you have an alpaca farm? I do. Okay, and how many alpacas do you have? I have 17 alpacas altogether. Can you name them for me? Oh, uh, hey. Come on. Uh, so we got Tess. Ace of Spades, True Colours and Charles are, as our main females, B, Winnie, Tilly, Snack Hill Sunset, uh, Winnie Moo, um, um, Liquid Eye Sunshine and G Dog if you know Garfield Cat, um, Spot the Difference, Footloose Fergus, uh, Sweet Dreams Indiana or Indiana Jones and, and Summertime Holly. Alzheimer's disease is a really common form of dementia. It accounts for nearly 80% of all cases. Uh, and it's a disease that becomes a lot more prevalent with age. Um, so as Ireland's population ages, we realised there was going to be a need for a less, much more efficient and less invasive test for Alzheimer's disease, which is where we got the idea for Sula. So we tested all of the students and staff in our year, well, in our school. Uh, we have about 20 students from each year and uh, 23 staff. We had them do a uh, two-part test. There was a... Um, the calibration and then there's the actual test where we uh, measured their reaction times. Um, so we found that eye movement was an early sign of Alzheimer's disease and we found that eye tracking was the quickest and easiest way to get at eye movement. The title of our project is the use of mushrooms to combat climate change, the natural bioremediator. And our project is really aiming to stop climate change by stopping soil contamination um, through a process called bioremediation. And that is a process where microorganisms can consume or break down environmental pollutants um, in contaminated sites. But more specifically to our project, it's microbiology or micro um, remediation, yeah, which is using fungi to consume and break down environmental pollutants to stop soil contamination. And this helps with a myriad of things, like it helps with more oxygen production because plants are dying. It promotes um, biodiversity because species have more pure plant sources that are not being killed. And it also helps with stopping deforestation as trees are not being killed due to contaminated soil. When we were working with Slurry one day, we were, we were sucking it out of the tank and the man that was doing it left the tank open and the bull fell into the tank, so that left a big job of us trying to get the bull out alive out of the tank. And after that day, we decided to try and just make it safer for human and animal around manhole tanks. When we were designing the original prototype, we didn't come up with the gowns until we were discussing it one night. And we said, Do you know, if we put up gowns, we make it even more safe in case a cat or a dog might fall into it. And even with the small hole there for the um, pipe, a cat can't fall into it really. And the amount of farmers that are dying every year are having accidents with slurry pits and everything. We just want to yeah. design something that would stop from just trying to save another life or animal life. So my dad's actually in healthcare and he works with individuals with both physical and intellectual disabilities. And he tells me many stories about his clients and how their independence is taken away from them. So I decided to focus on the aspect of being fed and how oftentimes healthcare providers have to manually feed their clients and how independence is an invaluable commodity for everybody. So I focused on this aspect to try and give them back that independence. So this here is the first prototype of my device. It is completely made from metal. It has interchangeable magnets, different strengths for different foods, and it is height adjustable. Whereas this prototype of my device here can be adjusted by doing it like this. But as it's plastic, it is much more lightweight and easier to transport. So the idea of this one is to be used in a home environment and this one will be used for outings such as going to a restaurant. From when Dennis's dad, so what he had to do, say last December, he had to go out during very cold temperatures in the morning and break ice off freezers and pour boiling water on the pipes because they were frozen and the cattle had no water. This is a really big health risk for him because the ground is slippy 
and also in Ireland the average age of a farmer is 53 years old so that's very dangerous work. So basically what it does, there's water in this main tank here and it pumps it into this and all these are connected so the water flows out through this pump here and it goes from this tank flows through here through a pipe and then goes all the way back in around to here so basically what that does is it keeps the water circulating and stops it from freezing my uncle he's, he's an engineer and um, well so I, I, I had a talk with him and he was talking about how, ways that we could stop it from freezing so he said we could use a pump and then I kind of came up with this idea here um, uh, he came up with one and I came up with one but we used the one that I came up with because um, it was just easier to build. So like the daily water intake for a cow is like 100, around 130 litres a day and they need this for good milk production and to keep it good and flowing. If it drops their milk, uh, the quality will not be as good and the milk production will slow down in all the cattle. So I was diagnosed with scoliosis in 2024 and I underwent spinal fusion surgery in 2025 and I started to think of a solution to help other students like me with scoliosis to help them make school life better and also to help them track the progression of the curve at home because I remember before my surgery I was always worried about how my spine would look like when I get my x-ray in six months. There's a huge waiting list now for spinal fusion surgery and there's hundreds and hundreds of children waiting currently so I designed an AI prototype that can track the progression of the curve through phone camera and once the AI detects a huge change it will ask you to contact your medical advisor and it also sends the data from the app to your orthopedic specialist such as like the progression of the if the curve has progressed or the it asks questions regarding pain so it'll ask you about like your pain levels throughout school if you can carry your school bag and things like if you can feel comfortable sleeping if you sleep through the night and then that the answers to those questions will be sent to the orthopedic specialist as well